So uh, I'm just going to show you guys how to uh, soak the clutch. Um, so, hmm. these are interesting. They're all different. They are all different. Okay, so we'll just make sure when you install these that you install them properly. There's a. These are um, these are the plates with the clutch material on them. They look like they're like rusting and stuff. I'm sure they coated them with something to keep it from rusting or something. Should be fine once the bike starts running. And then these are the I think these are the metal plates or something. Like sorry, I like I said this is my very first time working on a motorcycle clutch, so it's a. And it's a good thing it's a it's a dirt bike it's easy but what i've seen a lot of bikes have are um there's just a cover just for the for the clutch so you so you can just change the discs or adjust them just like that but this one has a whole side cover dealy so it's not as convenient as other dirt bikes oh it's kind of cool you can see all the innards see the see the big old bearing there i'm not really sure it's like it's like the oil pump or something I'm not really too familiar with motorcycle engines. All right, Hayes Omega is going to show you how to finish. Okay, so get so what I'm gonna do is get a plastic bag and make sure you get one without any holes. So I got this old Bass Pro Shop bag, probably used to buy ammo. It's probably got some gun residue in there, and then just go ahead and uh, just go ahead and uh, maybe. Um, pour a little bit of oil in there, and then, then like, kind of dip your finger, and then, then run it around the um, the discs, and just stick them in the bag and let them soak. All right, so I got them all soaked. Um, so what I did was uh, I got some uh, 10W40 motorcycle oil here. Uh, I can't stress enough that you should use motorcycle oil when changing your oil on your motorcycle, or use you know use the specified oil. But uh, I mean. Uh, it called for 10W40, that's what it said in the book, so I went and used 10W40 motorcycle oil. Because motorcycle oil has like some kind of additives in it that, uh, um, that uh, that's good for your clutch. Because um, remember, uh, automobiles, they don't have clu their clutches don't swim in the, in the oil, but your motorcycle clutch does. So that's why I highly recommend you use motorcycle um, oil. Um, Four motorcycles, and this is like this is a cheap oil. So, <laughs> so this this that's the cheapest oil that you can buy, but it'll work. Um, so there it is. I, I so what I did is I, like I did. I, I said exactly what I, I did. Uh, what I did um, is I got I just threw some oil in there. I gotta go put some some extra oil in there right now so I can soak them. I can keep this bag from moving. So just pour some oil in the bag. Don't be shy. And just uh, and just dump all that oil in your um, wherever you drain your oil. Uh, it's, and I just put it in the bag. I use a plastic bag because it's cheap, and I can just throw throw it away after. And it's a it's a petroleum product. So, <laughs> so uh, all right. So yeah. So what I did is I I, I dumped some oil in there, and then I wore some uh, gloves, and then I I just uh, I got the I, I spread the um, the oil over the plates like a like a kind of like a lotion or something. Just make sure. You, I think it, I think that really all you have to do is get the plates wet and just like kind of let it soak in there for a while. You don't have to like submerge it in oil. At least I don't think so. Um, yeah. So this is the way I'm gonna leave it in there. Just put some extra oil in there and it should be good to go. And then so so like uh, another thing I found out helps good is if you just take the whole the whole um, the whole uh, plate and just put it in there and just swish it around, flip it over. Um, should be good. And then uh, and then I'll explain the um, the clutch plates later. Uh, how one side has like a, a rounded edge and one has a sharp edge. I, I kind of learned something about that just now. But I uh, just try to keep the plates in the same direction. Um, and when in doubt, you can always just look at the old one oh, that you got. So just go ahead. Just go ahead and just leave those in there, put them someplace safe for a couple hours. Just gonna leave them up here. And that's it for tonight, I guess. Uh, I don't think you really need to soak the springs at all. Springs are springs. This is a heavy duty clutch spring set. Full engine set of heat treated, tempered steel coil or diaphragm springs with a guaranteed tension of 15% above standard. 
Ooh. Clutch springs are an extremely important part of motorcycle transits. We have to take very seriously the accuracy of spring tension and our range of CSK kits. Always check lever operating pressure for ease of clutch disengagement before riding or releasing motorcycle for use. So I don't know, maybe maybe there could be such a thing as uh, my springs are too uh, too stiff. Because I, I sure don't like a uh, I sure don't like a stiff clutch pull, man. You get tired. But uh, you want you want just enough uh, you want just enough where your clutch won't slip, you know, and maybe a little more if you add more weight to the bike, you know. So uh, so that's it for tonight. Um, so tomorrow, well, when next you see my video, me making a video, um, I will uh, take this apart, put it back together again. All right, Hades and out. Okay. Also, I want to mention that uh, that the the model of clutch kit I'm using is a DRC211. Uh, so that's what I got for the KLX. I hope it's the right one. Uh, it looks like the right one. Uh, this is the this is what I bought. I bought this through a uh, Rocky Mountain ATV. And um, yeah, so that's where I ordered like a lot of uh, dirt biking stuff. So so that's just the uh, that's the kit that I use for this. Uh, we'll see if it fits. Here's what I got for motocross and ATV use. All right, Hades Omega here. So it's been a uh, it's been a few days since uh, I last worked on this bike. It's still clean under here. Okay, good. For some reason, there's some oil all over the ground. But anyway, um, so from last I left, uh, um, I was uh, soaking the clutch plates and um, and oil and then uh, and then I, I needed a gasket because I I uh, I broke the gasket I took it out it was an old crusty gasket it was time to change it um, yeah so I wanted to get another one at my local uh, Kawasaki dealership and uh, it's only five dollars do yourself a favor if uh, if you haven't cracked that that side cover open in a while like since I bought the bike, um, go just go ahead and order yourself a clutch cover, so you don't wind up just leaving the bike like that, op all open, the whole time. I mean, I guess I could have put the cover back on without the gasket, but man, I'd rather not. Um, so, so yeah, that um, that evening that I worked on it, I uh, I wound up scraping this thing for like hours, taking that that gasket material off. I I have pictures. Showing it, but I got it clean. Like, see, it's nice now. So all I have to do is wipe it clean, and then uh, it's ready to put on. So there you go. That's a, that was the most labor-intensive uh, thing, and I actually uh, actually cleaned up the um, the engine too. So the engine's good to go. Still some dirty oil in there, but I can't really get it out unless I tilt the bike. Um, and I went and put the bolts back in. So, uh, all right. So, next order of business is I gotta um, gotta re actually replace the clutch. So, here we go. And uh, also, if you're changing your oil, now is a good time to uh, to change the filter. Um, I just took it out, and uh, I I found out that the gasket was bad too for the oil filter. So I wound up buying a new one. Um, it's just three bolts, and it comes out. And um, yeah, and then the uh, Behind here, uh, behind here is the oil filter. Um, the gasket covers this stuff here, but uh, it um, doesn't. Uh, when you take the gasket out, there's oil hiding behind there, so you gotta drain it again. So so messy, so messy. All right, so so yeah, I went and changed the filter too while I had the cover off because I was doing an oil change anyways. Okay, so uh, what we gotta take out next are these uh, 
the clutch spring bolts. So basically, that's all. Um, it says clutch disassembly. Um, they want you to remove it first, but we're not going to do that. You, you don't have to. I, at least I don't think so. I haven't done it yet, but uh, um, I think uh, just to replace the, the stuff that's worn out, you don't have to take the whole clutch basket out. Um, so that's that was only if you're replacing the clutch basket. But uh, I'm just going to change the plates. Um, so yeah. So so first remove the spring bolts, and then remove the spring plate. Um, so I've already I've already removed the bearing. I I remember that it was a uh, it had the um, it had the the numbers the. See, it says 6,000 Taiwan KN NTN bearing. I, I remember that was facing outward. And this is one of the dowel pins. Make sure you don't lose that. You should have two of them. Uh, I took it off of this so I could clean the gasket better. These uh, the spring bolts, uh, the bolts that hold the spring cover on, are actually, um, you should probably take them off in a certain order because it's under pressure. So, so just like do this one, do this one, you know, just do like a crisscross. So here we go. I'm so a little bit at a time. Kind of change the order up a little bit. Okay, so I'm just gonna go to do the rest by hand. Okay, I think you could just kind of do it by hand. Nope, nope, they're under pressure. So you can kind of push down on the plate. Oh, holy moly. Oh, I wonder how you're supposed to get this back on. <laughs> All right. Yeah, just slowly do each side. You'll feel it tension coming out. Okay, yeah, these are some really long bolts. There's a lot of pressure put on these bolts. So you don't have to worry about using Loctite. Eventually, they'll be just all become loose. You can do it by hand. Okay, that's loose. So you should be able to just take it out now. There it is. So this is the spring plate right here. Just gonna go set that size somewhere safe. These are the springs. Go ahead and take those out since we're going to be replacing them. <coughs> okay. And here are the plates. Oh. Okay, so there's a plate here. I guess this is a pressure plate or something. Um, has to come off and you gotta take this bolt out. Okay, so to get the pressure plate off, um, you have to, uh, you gotta take this bolt out here. So that's a 14 millimeter bolt. Um, so if you're having trouble getting it out, um, that's what I have this, uh, this wonderful tool here for. So what this does is you can, um, you can hold the, um, clutch the basket the clutch basket with like these pegs here or, or either way that you can use this the claws or the pegs here to hold it in place um, I'm gonna try to see if I can get it out with the impact gun if I can get it off right. with the impact gun nope it's not coming off okay Okay, so I see how this works now. Um, so it's the the basket doesn't move. It's the this whole pressure plate assembly is the one that moves. So you got to keep this from moving, or else it does nothing. 
So, so what you gotta do is you gotta put this tool in here so this stuff doesn't move. And I'll just get it in between here. So kind of get it like that. See, there's, there's these ribs here, or you can put it here on these prongs here. But anything just to keep it from moving. And then you can take it off. There you go. Okay. Pressure plate should just come out. And it does. Uh, it looks like a. It looks like there's a certain way. There's a certain way it goes off. Um, so just remember that this was at like the 12 o'clock position. In fact, uh, I, I don't know if there's a special way to take it out. Maybe, maybe this uh, this little shaft here is keyed perfectly. But just in case, I would go mark that. So this. Mark one of the teeth there. Okay, let me just take it off. So this little metal ring comes off with it. So make sure you keep that in there. There's a washer. So make sure you remember the order that these things go in. Uh, there's also a there's also like a key, keyhole, that doesn't apparently go anywhere. With a, well, it tells you like where to line it up. I don't know, really know what to line it up. Maybe on that 16 mark there, is where it goes. But you saw we, I marked the, I marked the shaft before I put it in, so I can always put it back the same way.